So you've heard a lot uh, about our project already. I would just like to uh, emphasize some points. Uh, it won't be a whole project presentation that would take too long and would become too boring. Uh, but I will focus on uh, dissemination. That's what we called word package, work package two. And since uh, Luke was talking about case studies, I also included a couple of slides about the case studies just to uh, mention what these really are. This was our uh, logo that we decided in the beginning, plastics aligned with nature. Uh, I still like it. Uh, I think we should stay with it. Uh, the title of the project tells the three key elements, innovative value chain, so we're looking at the whole value chain, development for sustainable plastics, that's the issue, sustainable plastics, in Central Europe. This was within the Central Europe program, so of course focus on Central Europe. That's also where we live, that's where we want to see development happening. Uh, why the project? Well, in Central Europe we have a lot of R&D, as was explained, lots of knowledge, pretty much bad cooperation, sometimes people not cooperating across the street, um, sometimes not cooperating with companies and so on. Industry, industry knowledge on the issue, relatively poor, with exceptions, uh, as also Luke, I think, uh, illustrated. Uh, as a result, knowledge transfer, poor or not existing in some cases, general public, gets conflicting information, is a little bit confused, supports environmental issues, but has doubts. Okay, that's, that's our situation. Let's be quite frank about it. Our general objective in the project is very complicated. Um, it's, a, it's a very long and complicated sentence. Maybe I should read it. Creating a framework, uh, framework conditions for enhancing development of bioplastics market in Central Europe as an innovative test bed for new product applications in selected industries. So uh, what's the point? Creating framework conditions, so creating conditions for the development of the market. So focus on the market in Central Europe. And this is as a uh, innovative test really for new product applications in industries, not in all industries. Uh, in some selected. Our specific objectives were particularly raising awareness in several or a number of target, target groups to improve or to enable uh, technology transfer, improving access to scientific knowledge, and to intensify application-oriented cooperation. So we were trying to address the issues that were Ill, uh, uh, shown in the beginning as being relatively weak, okay? I will start with the raising awareness because that's part of the uh, dissemination issue. Uh, our approach was here to offer unbiased information. What do I mean unbiased information? We're not selling anything. That's why we're not biased. I don't care, really, if somebody wants to buy a starch-based material or a fossil-based biodegradable polyester, I really do not care. I would like them to consider using some of these materials. And that's why we're unbiased. And I believe that within the group, and was probably evident this morning, uh, or during the day today, uh, by the speakers that were largely involved and in, uh, somehow in contact, if not else, with our project, we have the scientific basis to give this information. So I, I'm quite confident that we can really give unbiased and scientifically tested information to various target groups uh, in the complete value chain. We had different tools to do this. We used uh, media a lot. We had uh, presentations, many of those publications, brochures, leaflets, and events. We're at the final event, uh, no, I think it's not the final event. I think our uh, friends in Poland, uh, this project will finish on September the 30th and they have planned an event on September the 29th, which I think is proper show of dedication. They wish to work all the way to the end. <laughs> so we used all these uh, possibilities. We prepared 28 brochures, leaflets, 
we've had a number of interviews, really, we've generated in our countries now that we've compared it yesterday, we had a meeting and compared it uh, uh, between the countries, we have generated a lot of media attention. Uh, it was evident in all the countries uh, by uh, newspaper articles, by interviews, uh, radio, TV, uh, actually very, very interesting, I, I would say. Uh, we had 16 national or regional events, four international conferences, this is the fourth one, uh, 56 presentations on events organized by others, okay? So we had a really strong presence throughout this uh, period. And actually it didn't go unnoticed, I'm happy to say. We used uh, uh, electronic media as well, quite uh, well. Luckily, I have very good co-workers that know more about this than I do. I have to admit, I do not have a Facebook uh, uh, address. I think it's called an address, I don't know. I don't exist on Facebook. But still, our Facebook functions very well. So, on the web page, we had more than 70,000 views. These are 13,500 unique users. I, I think they were probably coming back on Facebook. I don't know if this is a lot, but we have 165 likes, but we have an average post reach of 25 people, five average visits per day, and so on, and daily updates. Um, YouTube, I think this is actually a really uh, great success, our videos on YouTube. Uh, you're probably wondering why we have all these cameras here. That's because we put our videos on YouTube, and then if some poor soul was not able to be here, unfortunately, uh, they can still, when they have time, whenever, wherever, as long as they have an internet connection, watch our presentations. And they do. That's the interesting thing. They do. We've had more than, uh, well, almost 10,000 views, 9,500. And it's very interesting. Every time you check, it goes up a little bit. It just goes up, up, up. Of course, some videos are more popular, some less. They're in different languages as, as we manage to get them, put them on, and so on. So uh, I think uh, this worked really well for dissemination. I'm very pleased with it. And I uh, actually hope this will also continue. We've done some uh, uh, sort of unexpected stuff, I think, as well. Uh, we were using, let's say, movies. Uh, to promote our uh, ideas. For example, in Slovenia, we had the uh, premiere of the Trashed movie. This is Smiti, uh, like trash in Slovenian. Uh, this was October 2013, I think. I think that last year. We had about 1,000 visitors on two showings. We had a, a round table organized at that time. We had some very interesting uh, people discussing it. Uh, the issue of zero waste came out, which was now taken up by a number of municipalities in Slovenia. So, um, by such ways, I think we really generated attention uh, and raised the issues. We didn't just push bioplastics. We pushed the issues and the discussion about it, and then we contributed to the discussion. That's how we were approaching it. In Slovenia, uh, a movie, Plastic Fantastic, was uh, made by effectively uh, an enthusiastic amateur, which we supported. We helped him uh, distribute the movie. When he had showings in different uh, uh, cities or towns, we would go with him, uh, join the discussions, again, reach people, and we did. One thing that we uh, did was also, this, this was in the original plan as well, to organize national information points. In our, all four countries where we uh, have partners, we decided to organize national information points, points where people, companies, whoever is interested, can get information about our plastics. So we did that. But then we saw, okay, if we can make four, well, maybe we can make more as well. And we started exploring that and expanding it. 
And I have to say that I'm very pleased now that from the planned five, that's four of ours and one in English that we planned, we now have 17. As far reaching as China, Brazil, even the United States, uh, which we didn't really expect to achieve in the beginning, but we managed it. And uh, it's, a, it's a very interesting platform. We want to fill it more with content to have reach. For example, we had a, a partner, had uh, a partner that was or a, a participant in our uh, project that could help us translate our materials into Russian. So we have publications in Russian. Uh, of course, they're downloadable, so I think we can access all of a sudden, or reach at least, uh, Russian-speaking populations. And that, that just starts growing very quickly. And we want to, uh, well, at least try to keep this momentum up, and we'll be looking for opportunities how to do it. We've reached a lot, but we'd like to go even further. Why is this actually interesting? Why? I mean, it's a, it's a Central Europe program. Why would we be interested in contacting Brazil? Well, why not? Uh, Central Europe wants to establish itself as a center of knowledge of innovative environmental technologies and products. Well, you have to announce this around, but also as we're building this capacity, we can simply translate it, replicate it, share it. And why not share it? This is a European funded uh, project. Uh, we can include, and we did include, uh, member states that were not part of the uh, Central Europe area. We included countries that are looking forward to closer association or membership with the EU. We were looking at uh, the neighborhood of Europe. For example, I don't know, Turkey, important for Europe. Uh, and we're looking even forward, uh, I mean, further afield to countries that have close contacts are important for the future of Europe. So it makes sense. One thing we did also was uh, to establish certification portals in Slovenia and Slovakia uh, in cooperation with Din Certko using a model that was already established in Poland. So now companies can access uh, these portals in these two countries and get the whole certification process done in their own language. I hope this will be useful. Uh, the roadmap for action was mentioned already. I won't talk about it. We just promoted it uh, as we're promoting it actually right now, wrong direction. Uh, the transnational advisory scheme will be mentioned by my colleague, uh, Greg Gonczewski. So I will not uh, much talk about it. Greg, you will say more about this. Uh, this is a, I think, very, very interesting publication, if I may say so, uh, at the same level as some books that you have to buy. Uh, we are giving them free. You can download it, and it, I think, has the same quality of information. I would like to mention case studies uh, that Luke was talking about. Case studies were done as a focus test, always in cooperation with companies, with the purpose of learning something, not to make a prototype or to advance a certain material company or anything like that, but rather to have an example to then show and say, okay, we can learn this and this from this case study. That's why we did, did it. Uh, okay, I'm not very good at uh, putting slides together, but posters about the case studies are upstairs. They're hanging up, so please look at them. I won't go into details. I'll just mention the three types of case studies or results that we found. We've created four prototypes. They can be simple things if you want, but I think they're interesting. Drinking straw, tampon applicator, twine, egg cartons. You've heard about the egg cartons, or at least the blends from which the egg cartons were made. So this was done in Slovenia, in Slovenia, in Italy, and in Slovakia. Uh, small things, but uh, we 
We learned, in fact, that the search for a material to make a real product on real machinery, existing machinery, uh, can in fact be very demanding or limiting. It can go very smoothly or you can really hit a problem as soon as you start introducing special requirements. On the material side, on the functionality side, why, let me just give one example or two examples maybe. The tampon applicator has to be very soft and it has to be very precise for the injection molding. Very thin walls have to be made correctly. It becomes difficult to get such a material. Twine has to be biodegradable in soil. So you need to get a material that's certified to be biodegradable in the soil and have the properties you require. That was not trivial either. Uh, we did some technology showcases. I'll mention two, markers for bioplastics. When you pick up a, material, uh, a product made of bioplastics, you have no idea if it's not marked that it is bioplastics. I confuse PLA and polystyrene or any, anything you want. I confuse it and I know these materials. So the idea is that we could mark these materials so at least in the waste management process, you could identify them, possibly through an automated system. We tested UV master batches, UV print, and IR print. You can see, for example, here, a bag with a UV print. You can easily identify. These are master batches, and this is the IR print under IR. Uh, when you look at these two stripes without, at normal light, they're both dark. Here, one is dark, one is light. Okay. <clears throat> so successful and could be used, in fact. Uh, technology showcases uh, in the waste management and composting. We did two examples here. One was actually quite involved, done in Poland, where retail collection, so waste collection and composting was combined in a rather elaborate uh, system uh, to, to check all the steps and to prove that they function. Uh, another full-scale composting was finished actually this month in Slovenia and this was on the level of a hundred ton composting uh, pile that was peppered with several hundred kilos of biodegradable uh, bags and you'll hear about this I think tomorrow possibly. It's, it's very simple, it's been done before already elsewhere but I can tell you that in the waste management companies, nobody wants to put plastics in the compost. Even if you tell them it's certified and it will biodegrade, they say, yes, yes, but I won't put it in. I don't want to put it in. So the result, I think, uh, although predictable, it would be, uh, was still, I think, surprising for them. Uh, a methodology showcase, LCA. We did an LCA on bags bags actually used in retail in the Mercator uh, chains. We picked three different types of bags uh, and did the LCA. I'm not going to comment much on the uh, results of the LCA. We just showed how it can be done, who can do it, how long it takes, how much it costs, what the results look like. That's the information that companies want. That's what they're asking. And we have to be able to answer them. In this case, actually, bioplastics were quite competitive, but of course under certain conditions. Most importantly, what you do uh, with them when they become waste. Okay? If I just uh, finish with some influences of the project activities in different countries, they were different, of course, country to country. Uh, Italy was at a different level when we started because they already uh, started using uh, biodegradable bags on a large scale based on uh, a regulatory uh, requirement. Uh, but the rest of us, I think, were pretty much at the same level. Uh, I would say in Slovenia, if I just go quickly by countries, uh, there was great media attention. Uh, we, we certainly raised awareness through all the target groups, I would say. Uh, most interest was from end user industries. Okay, whoever has a product would like to have a different kind of product. Uh, but there was slow uptake from the converter side. Those people making the products 
we're kind of a little bit hesitant about it. That's what we noticed. Uh, in this time, uh, a new, new uh, collection of organic waste was introduced also, so the demand in biodegradable bags went up. But I think, in my opinion, one of the uh, very important effects that will carry on is that bioplastics and biopolymers were included in new projects. For example, the Polymer Technology College here has some projects. I dare to say that the uh, project that was presented uh, earlier, the Poly for Amy, was also at least slightly influenced by what we were doing and saying. Uh, bioplastics, biopolymers were also included in company projects where they were looking for funding for their own development. That is what we wanted and that is what we achieved. In Slovakia, uh, very strong interest from the industrial sector, uh, which we believe improved the knowledge transfer. Uh, end user industry interest, especially car industry, that's a specificity in, in Slovakia. Uh, strong general media interest, that's something we had all over, at least once we really worked on it. Um, poor accessibility of economically acceptable products. So that was seen as a weak point, a lot of SME interest, particularly for the newly developed uh, biodegradable material that was in introduced earlier by Professor Hodak. And uh, a very, uh, I would say, nice development, a new center for applied research of environmentally friendly polymeric materials was uh, uh, organized in Nitra, and I really think this will be a long-lasting uh, effect. Not that we organized that, but uh, certainly we contributed to it. Poland has some specificity, strong national R&D support, stronger, I think, than in other countries, and a large growth in the converter uh, industry. What happened there? Some of uh, the things Luke mentioned already, uh, but an establishment of a very strong info center. I think our partner Tsoboro in Warsaw uh, really established itself as the premier information center in the country. There's an improved interface uh, between R&D and industry. Uh, very strong SME interest. Uh, and also uh, something that is difficult to get. There was a noticeable interest from policymakers at national and local uh, level. This is something that is uh, difficult to crack to, to start talking with the policymakers, but also one of our target groups. Uh, in Italy, so the situation was different from the start from, because of a, a new law on biodegradable plastics or bags from 2011. Here uh, it was, um, uh, some of the results were raising awareness in support of this change that the law brought. Uh, in Italy, also, there is an advanced uptake by industry, so it's not staying in the bag business, but it's going further into other products already. Uh, and there, I believe we also contributed slightly to the support for moving in the direction of green chemistry products, effectively to a bioeconomy platform that I am very happy to say is uh, growing very well in Italy, at least that's my impression. So we've dented the issue and we've dealt with some of the challenges. We haven't solved them. This whole process to me is like driving a tanker. I mean, I've turned the, or we have all turned the wheel, but the ship still seems to be going forward. But I think we have turned the wheel at least a bit and that's why the ship will move. This is a process that needs time. There are important decisions that have to be made. We're dependent on investments. We cannot do the investments. Markets have to develop. But the result will be growth, raise competitiveness, jobs that we all need, and money. And I think the ship is turning, even if we cannot see it. And we helped in that. I will finish with that. These are our contacts here. They will continue being active, so please check our materials. And I'll finish with the last slide. There's also another sign of a very successful project. 
I always check in our projects how many babies <laughs> were <laughs> born during the project by project members. We can count five, uh, four girls, one boy. And I have to say, despite Slovenia not winning the World Cup in soccer or basketball, here Slovenia leads five to zero. <laughs> so I'll leave you with that picture. <laughs> Thank you.